And welcome back to Dominican Rendezvous. So happy you have taken a few moments out of your day to join us once again here at Dominican Rendezvous. So I got another comment from our friend Sophie, who many of you may know, uh, comments from time to time on some of the videos uh, that are posted. And she's obviously a regular viewer of Dominican Rendezvous. And I really do appreciate her comments, although while I do not agree with a large part of what she says, I do appreciate the fact that she has taken the time to to make comments and to uh, state her opinion accordingly. And in fact, if you do think about it, uh, some of the things that she's written does make one sit and pause and and reflect on some of the things uh, that she's saying, especially when it comes to dealing in real estate in the Dominican Republic. In her mind, she feels that investing in a Dominican Republic is a bad choice. And so on, her, on, on a recent video, she left the following message, and I'm reading. So many people lost their properties during the last hurricane. But bad investment, waste of money to invest anything in the Dominican Republic, especially now. Uh, people won't travel as much as those of you who are trying to rent your condo will have a hard time, but still have to pay maintenance fees, commissions, insurance, security guards, internet collections, electricity bills, and what have you. Then good luck trying to resell your condo. It will sit on the market with thousands of other ones for years and won't sell. LOL. Thank you again, Sophie, for your comment. And so today... In this video, I would like to just give a, a give a response to to what Sophie had written. Uh, my response is simply this: as a potential investor in the Dominican Republic, you need to know all the telltale telltale signs of what this real investment entails, and what is a good investment and what is a bad investment. Now, I have said many times before in other videos, and you can go back and look at my playlist at these videos. I've said you need to adequately prepare, you need to study, you need to do your homework, and you need to learn to buy right at the beginning. By doing so and becoming adequately prepared, listen, you're gonna save yourself a lot of headache in the long run, and you're going to learn to make a wise decision in the beginning. But as perhaps you and as perhaps you and some of you like Sophie uh, need to realize and recognize that if and when you have made a bad decision, and I don't know, Sophie, if you've actually bought property in the Dominican Republic and you felt that you're, you've lost some uh, equity or your return on investment was not made possible, but you need to know how to recognize it and how to turn it around uh, um, if possible and if need be, cut all your losses and run and move on. Look, to be able to know these tell telltale signs takes a few things. You need to be able to recognize what could be or is a bad investment. That is the key point. Again, as I've mentioned to you in many past videos, there are some tips that you can find in these videos that will help you understand what these tell tell signs are. The first one is perhaps you didn't adequately uh, prepare and assess the market and do your proper calculations of the market. Uh, the numbers that you came across at first or that you're seeing in the beginning don't seem to quite add up. They don't figure uh, correctly. You see, you have to be priced right. If you aren't priced right, in the end, you're going to have a problem. Perhaps you're seeing that now as you have this property, you're not realizing any equity uh, in the property. You're not realizing any uh, return on profit, uh, a return on your investment. Perhaps you borrowed money against it and you're upside down uh, in, in, in your investment because you bought wrong. The loan to value ratio is not working in your favor. You don't have cash reserves because the place is falling apart. And as the place falls apart, you need to fix things. You just don't have the money to be able to do that. And then, of course, your equity will decrease as well. If this is the case, these are some of the things that you need to consider carefully and seriously. And perhaps if it becomes too much, you need to walk away. The second point is this. You didn't recognize fully that location is paramount. I've said it before. Location, location, location. 
Buying a piece of property in an area that you think is a good area is not simply enough. You have to have done your homework. You have to have seen what's available in the area around your particular property. If you fail to do your due diligence, if you fail to do your research before you invest, you'll find yourself in a situation where you're going to be stuck with a non-appreciating asset. Uh, you're going to be in a place where you're not going to be able to realize good rents. You may not even have renters at all. Your place may go vacant like other places around you if the, if the location is not again. So go back Again, as I said, go back, take a look at the playlist. There are some videos in there that will helpful, help you with some useful advice on how to look for a good place when you're investing. The location is important. The amenities that are available, the services that are available in the area. You need to know what the vacancy rates are. I've talked about this before. You need to know how to find good tenants and good renters and how to keep good tenants and good renters. Perhaps what is the school system uh, like around in the area if you're thinking of renting to, to families? Um, and obviously the crime rates are very, very uh, important as well. So you need to look at all these things when you're considering the uh, location of your property before you invest. You know, it really amazes me, and this is the third point, that sometimes I watch these Facebook groups or these uh, WhatsApp groups and some of the text messages and the, and the messages that go back and forth uh, on them and even in Instagram to some extent. And you see these people who really have no idea what is a quote good deal on a property you'll hear them say oh there's a great deal in this property oh wonderful price wonderful price this property looks good or it's a steal it's a great deal and they want to jump in immediately and buy that particular property never once asking i think is one of the most fundamental and the most basic of all questions when you're looking at a property and that is excuse me how long has this property been on the market Listen, if you can't get a straight answer, you need to think twice. If you get an answer that the property has been on the market for longer than five or six months, seven months, or even a year in some cases, you better start thinking seriously about that property. There's a reason that property has not sold. There's a reason other investors have not shown much interest in that property. That's where you need to dig in and find out what's going on with that property. And stop and think before you say, oh, what a great deal, I'm gonna buy it because it's so cheap or inexpensive, it's priced right. Think twice, how long has it been on the property? Has it been on the market? and ask yourself again, why has it not sold? One of the fourth, the fourth reason I to say, or another reason, is that people tend to not really calculate and count the cost of owning property in the Dominican Republic and elsewhere for that matter. You have to count the cost before you purchase, before you buy, before you begin to invest. Many times people don't think that. Going back to the third point, they think, oh, it's a great deal, it's a great deal, but they really have not looked at the cost. They really have not written down the numbers on paper and studied them and looked at them and, and to see what's actually going on because what is gonna happen is there may be some hidden defects in that property that may end up costing you a lot more money than you ever anticipated or you realize. There could be plumbing issues. There could be electrical issues. There could be roofing issues. Any kind of number of issues could um, arise and show their ugly head, and you're going to be stuck with repairing them or not repairing them. And that, too, may be a factor as to why you have made a bad investment. Uh, fifthly, and I think it's very important, and you've heard me say this many, many times, for those of you who have uh, watched Dominican Rendezvous for any length of time, and that is you need to seek advice. You need to get good legal advice. You need to get good uh, real estate advice from someone who knows the market, who understands the market, not just some fly-by-the-night company that just is out there, has had no experience selling in the market. Uh, you need to find a, an agent or a realtor that really knows what's going on and is going to advocate for you and on behalf of you. Get the advice. The reason for this is that if that title has problems, 
you're going to have problems. If it's not clear, you're going to have problems. You're going to need a lawyer. You're going to need a real estate professional to help you make sure that all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed, everything is working in your favor so that you don't get stuck with something that you cannot move or sell and make a profit later on. One final thought, and this is it. Sophie mentioned hurricanes in her, in her comment. And she's right. Natural disasters and acts of gods are, are, are just that. They do happen in the Dominican Republic. And if you're thinking of buying a pers- piece of property uh, that is in possibly in harm's way or uh, has the uh, possibility of being in a, in, a, in a hurricane situation at some point, you absolutely need to get insurance. And that's the thing. Insurance is available but depending on the, the area where you are, it could cost you a lot of money for this insurance. And so again, this is something that you need to think of prior to going into this investment. You need to make sure that you have counted that cost of, of what uh, insurance is going to cost you and be prepared to pay those premiums because this will take uh, quite a toll on your return on your investment in the long run if you have not calculated it in from the beginning. So in conclusion, Sophie, thank you again for your, for your comment. really helps us to recognize the preliminary warning signs from making a bad decision, making a bad investment. Uh, the bottom line is this. Buy right from the beginning. Buy right as you start your process. The more info you have in the front end, the better off you will be in the back end. So keep in touch. Uh, to Dominican Rendezvous and to this channel uh, for more no-cost advice, for more resources, for more tips, uh, for more information. Look, Dominican Rendezvous is for you. For those of you who uh, have come to the decision or some of you who are making that decision and thinking about uh, investing in a Dominican Rendezvous, the Dominican Rendezvous channel is for you. And I want you to stay tuned because in a couple of weeks, I'm going to give you some more um, information that is going to be very, very useful for you of how you can become more equipped, better equipped as you begin your journey into investing in the Dominican Republic. Once again, thank you, Sophie, for your comments. I hope you got my um, comment that I responded to you online. For those of you who would like to send more comments, please do on any of the videos. I do appreciate it. Uh, Feel free to drop me an email. I do return emails, probably not as quickly as I should, but I do return the videos, uh, sorry, the comments to the videos uh, as quickly as I can. Thank you very much for joining Dominican Rendezvous. From me to you, Dominican Rendezvous.